by Veda Benkhatra, who is going to moderate our Q&A session today. Thank you very much for joining us, Veda. Well, let's go ahead and jump right in. Why are we here today? We want to talk to you about what the Board of Trustees does, and also to answer your questions about the Board of Trustees. Over the next few months and the few months that just preceded us, several of us, our peers, have attended various conferences such as this, where we hope we are demystifying what does the Board of Trustees do, and perhaps we can convince some of you to consider being a candidate for the next election in 2024. Uh, you can see on this slide that Mike and I are just two members. There are a total of 12. I'm going to hand it over to Mike now, who's going to share with us what does the board do? The next slide. Um, so the board is a very high level body, and its aim is to provide the overview of the strategy or, or help make sure that the overview of the strategy is there for the organization. Um, so it's, um, you can see here, there's the definition from the English Wikipedia. And the Board of Directors, Board of Trustees, is the same thing. Um, and it basically, um, one of the key things it does is look at the annual plan that is proposed by the staff and uh, who sat and um, gives feedback on it and supports Mariana, who's in the audience here, uh, with her work as a CEO. Um, so, go to the next slide as well. Yes, yeah, so this is defining what the board's role uh, is with oversight of the organization and supporting Mariana uh, with vision for the organization. It has fiduciary uh, duties with, legally within the, within the US um, and responsibilities for um, reviewing and improving the uh, plan. Um, I'll give the, uh, the mic back to Rosie to talk about what that uh, means in practice. So this is very fine and good, a really good definition of what boards do, but you're thinking, what does a board, practically speaking, what does it do? Our most recent accomplishment has been approving the Foundation's annual plan for the current fiscal year. We work closely with our CEO, Mariana Skander, to support the strategy and goals for the annual plan. But the annual plan is only a part of it. An annual plan, by definition, would be annual, one year. We are also kicking off a much longer term strategic planning in the context of the 2030 movement strategy. The uh, strategy sessions included collaborating with the endowment board, with the movement charter drafting committee. You'll hear more from them after this session. Um, we're also gearing up for the board election, which will happen in 2024, and we discuss things like what do we need of the candidates who are going to become potentially new trustees, not just potentially the ones who are elected, but we also have discussions about what do we need from those who are appointed. Next slide. As we prepare for the future, uh, to hear your perspective, Rosie and Mike, on what skills should one person who is willing or wants to be candidate for or to run for the next election, what capacities or skills should one have to run, or at least for us in the African community to be present there? Is it something that is it something that you would recommend in this regard? I could spend a long time on this answer, but I'll try to be brief. I think that what you, the voters, want when you are voting for for in the elections is you want to feel someone is trustworthy. You might look at how many edits do we have or when did we become a Wikimedia and how many years, or how many articles have we created, or how many images have we uploaded, or what's our work look like in Wikidata. You want to think that we are somehow trustworthy within the movement in that way. 
but also in leadership ways. Have we served on committees? Have we been a part of an affiliate? Have we been the founder of an affiliate? Have we been the founder of some wiki project that's now doing some amazing things? I think the answer is, when you voted for me, the answer was yes, 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 that I had done those things, but also that I'm a polyglot, I speak more than one language, so I believe that's a skill that the general Wikimedia movement thinks is important, and you are looking for that. Um, I think you are looking at the education of the person you are voting for. I let's say, quote unquote, I only have a master's degree, um, and some of my fellow <laughs> Uh, trustees have PhDs um, and have had MDs, so I think you look at things like the education level of someone who's a prospective candidate. So it seems like that's who you voted for, that's who you think as a voting body, you think those are important kinds of skills. I'd say maybe of those, the most important is that you trust the person you're voting for, that they will be able to sit on the board and engage in what the board does, which is high-level strategic thinking. We do not focus on any one community. I come from a couple of different communities, and I cannot focus on those communities. I must focus from 60,000 feet across the board on high-level strategic thinking. This is what I think you are looking for when you vote. I think there's a few parts of that that I would echo, particularly the high-level thinking. It's uh, a very different perspective on, on, the, um, on the movement. Um, so I've been in the movement for a long time, starting um, very much on English video and editing, moving across all the different areas. And it's very easy to focus on specific things that we're on, just add articles, things like that. Whereas living on the board, you need to be looking much more at the um, overview and um, the big picture of where the movement overall is going. I think a key part of that is getting experience within <coughs> other movement structures. So I was on the board of an affiliate for five years, building up experience, understanding things at a national level in that case. Um, and I was also on a, a board committee, the uh, Funds Dissemination Committee, um, just looking at a specific aspect again on finances, on grants. And we're looking more broadly across the whole of the um, panels at the time. And you build up that experience, you build up the uh, understanding of how the community movement works overall, and that's um, something that then you can bring to the board with that perspective. I think, particularly with the board, um, select the seats for, uh, um, through the elections, and um, coming from a very um, good understanding of the community is essential. Working across multiple projects, working with leadership projects, with like Rosie has with women in red, clearly demonstrating you're thinking strategically on Wiki as well and trying to make a general impact there rather than necessarily just focusing on individual articles which complements that, but you do need to have that very much general viewpoint. So if you're looking to be on the board, I would very much encourage you to look at committees, look at places where you can play leadership roles now and build up that expertise. Um, because as regular elections, we have one coming up next year, um, and there will be others in a few years after that. Half of the board is community select, um, selected uh, through these elections, um, so there's always opportunities coming up. So I do think in the long term. And also, I would encourage you if you do stand and you don't get selected, don't feel discouraged. I stood in the 2021 elections, I was not selected. I stood again in the 2022 ones and I was then selected. You gain experience to go through the election process, to understand what people are asking. You get a whole series of questions that people will ask you to understand your experience better. Um, and you will have interactions with the other board candidates, um, which can itself be very valuable for understanding where other people are coming from. Um, and if you, even if you are not ultimately selected, that's a very beneficial process to have been through to have learned that and so we can then take into future um, elections. I'll have that to Okay. I should have probably 
quickly mention, I think it's important to focus not only on a geographic level, a country level or regional level, but also international work. And by that I mean, I served on Wikimedia District of Columbia board. Uh, the last five years I was the vice president. Um, but that's the only thing I did on a national level. On an international level, regionally, I co-founded Wiki Conference North America User Group. On a very broad international level, I was on the affiliations committee for six years. The last two, I was the chair. I served on the community health working group as part of movement strategy. I co-founded two wiki projects on English Wikipedia, one which is now on 33 language Wikipedias, the first in 2014 wiki project Women Writers, and then more recently Women Wiki Project Women in Red, which is now very international. I say this to you so that you understand that um, maybe you don't focus just on one thing, but over the course of your um, wiki work, your wiki life, I hope it's a very long life, that you, your focus is in different areas, um, maybe geographic, but also international. Follow your heart. What do you enjoy doing and do that? Certainly, everything I did was not trying to get myself to be a good candidate for the board. I never even thought I would be doing that. It was because it was things I enjoyed doing and things I thought someone needed to do. And so, okay, I'll go ahead and I will do it. Thank you so much, uh, Rosie and Mike. Uh, I would like to jump on what Mike has mentioned earlier about um, as we're opening the floor to questions. You've mentioned that there is a role, a important role for committees within the trustees. So I believe that each one of you sit in a different committee. And what is, what is the role of your committee and what are these committees and how they help in as, or assist in the work of the board as a whole? So what the committees, I mean, there's a whole range of committees the board has. Uh, there's governance, there's the executive, there's uh, trust and culture, uh, sorry, there's um, talent and culture, um, product and technology. Um, what I would focus on in particular is the community affairs committee, which I'm a member of. Um, and that one is focused on how do you, um, how does foundation engage well with the community, with yourselves, um, and that has very wide ranging um, impacts. So we have regular discussions, we have a meeting internally every month to talk about all different aspects. Um, and then we also have, every three months at the moment, a public meeting that um, anyone can come along to and ask questions. If you have questions, there's an ask CAC at wikimedia.org email address. You can always send questions about that to about any part of Wikimedia movement, um, any part of Wikimedia Foundation. Um, if you have something you want to understand better or you have questions you specifically want to ask, to board members. Um, as part of that, we also do sessions like this. We come to events, we talk to people, uh, both in these sessions and in the outside. Um, and we also engage on Wiki and things like that. We have specific projects, specific tasks we also work on. So one thing we're currently reviewing is sister projects. So I'm in the very early days, there are a lot of different sister projects. And I was any non-Wikipedia projects were set up. So you got Wiki Sports, you got Wiki Books, you got Wiki University, Wiki News. All of these were set up in the very early days. Um, and then there's been a long hiatus of that. There have been two projects set up more recently, one being Wikidata in 2012, and then most recently Wiki Functions, which has come through very special processes, um, basically coming directly to the board for approval and establishment. And in the meantime, there's been a whole load of other projects which have been proposed online. Um, which have just sat there and not got any attention over the years. So we're currently trying to figure out how do we tackle that issue strategically. And it's not up to the board to decide on which, we, which few projects we'll have. It's very much has to be from the, from the community, from the um, roundup. So we're looking at the overall 
processes that you can put in place for this. Maybe there should be a system projects committee or something like that, whose work is focused on these um, approving, closing down where things aren't going well, and looking at that at the very high level at the moment. We have all three advisory members on the committee who are engaged with that as well. And if you're interested in this, please do engage on the wiki. If you go to the um, proposed new project page, there's a link at the top um, in the banner that says we're not going to be accepting projects um, because we're doing this review. If you click on that, you'll find more information. And that's just one of the ways that the CAC is engaging with important movement wide conversations that need to happen and have just been languishing for a long time. I want to go back over to Rosie to talk about. Thank you, Mike. As Mike said, there are several committees on the board, and most of the work is done within committees with recommendations then that go up to the full board. One of the committees I serve on and am now the chair of is Talent and Culture. In a nutshell, that means pretty much human resources. We have the board has one employee, the CEO. And so what the Talent and Culture Committee does on an annual basis, it does a review of the CEO and also has discussions regarding the compensation uh, structure for not just the CEO, but also for the leadership team, the chief officers within uh, the corporate, within, within the organization. Thank you so much, Mike and Rosie. Uh, my question here is what skill or talent uh, you as a trustee are bringing, or someone who is running for a candidate could bring to the board? When I decided to become a candidate in uh, 2021, it was um, after giving it some thought for 24 months before that, before the pandemic. And in that time, I thought, what could I bring? What, what is my area, specific area of interest beyond the really high level thinking and the, the strategy? What, what area would I focus on? And my thought at the time originally was communications. But once I joined the board, I realized that communication spans across everything we do, everything that the board does, everything that the foundation does, everything that the movement does. We're all communicating, right? I mean, even the articles we write, it's all a form of communications. What I hadn't expected, maybe I shouldn't, but I hadn't, was that I have a, a professional experience in human resources, particularly in talent acquisition, recruitment. You know, you're hired, you're hired, you're hired, you're hired. I did not realize that this background in human resources would be valuable on the board. And so serving on the Talent and Culture Committee, which focuses on HR issues broadly construed and um, was a skill that I brought that I didn't realize would be valuable, but it is valuable. And there's no one who quite has that on the board except for me. So um, that's my magic superpower, if you will. I think in general, everyone brings something different to the board. And there's no simple thing. I mean, if, if we said you, you need to do this, this, and this, then everyone on the board would be a carbon copy of each other, it wouldn't be useful. It's the uniqueness we bring to the board, the different perspectives, the different backgrounds. And so, personally, I come from an academic background. My day job is in astronomy. I work um, on radio telescopes. Um, I work in academia, basically. So, I bring partly that perspective. I also bring a very long standing um, community perspective from my, my home wiki probably is now Wikidata or Commons, and also it was Wikipedia and others. But everyone brings something unique. So look at um, yeah, your professional background, um, your general skill set, and where, you're, where you bring unique knowledge to the board, unique perspective. Um, do not think there is a magical um, answer of this is this. It is always different for every different person. Thank you so much. 
support for the response and clarification. I think we are opening now the floor to questions from the audience. So if you have any questions, please raise your hand and I will be giving you the mic. Yes?
So I know in particular Shandy Evanstein, who um, you talk with her online, she's been engaging a lot in this area, trying to bring all the different parties together because there's a whole load of different affiliates that work on this issue as well as foundation. And it needs to be a coherent um, activity across the whole of the movement, which is just these ongoing discussions for a moment. There's not much more I can add to what Mariana and Mike have already said, except for this. At the Wiki Edu conference in Belgrade, Serbia in May of this year, there were several, several strategic sessions regarding hubs. And I, if it wasn't clear then, I hope it's clear now. The rest of the movement is looking at um, education hubs conversations as um, how are they going thematically, how is that hub conversation going, and how might we engage that, the findings from that kind of thematic potential hub in other areas of the movement. For example, perhaps a Wiki Women's Hub also being thematic in its own way. But we are looking to Wiki Edu and the hubs conversation as a starter for thematic ways of having hubs and hope to learn from you as those of you in the um, education sector continue to work in that area. Thank you so much. Yeah, Douglas? Thank you very much. Um, so we all, it's, it's well known that um, the devs in the Wikimedia Foundation are snowed under with enormous amounts of work. And um, generally there's, there's uh, not enough technology support coming out of the devs to, to satisfy the needs of that movement. Um, what is the current thinking of the board around assisting the devs to... Oh, sorry. Uh, much better. Um, what is the uh, to repeat my question quickly? So the the uh, development of software, the maintaining of software, or rather the upgrading of software, providing software support produced by the foundation and the devs in the foundation. Everyone knows that they well, it is it's commonly known, I would say everyone knows, but it's commonly known and generally I can say for me to say agreed on that they, they feel snowed under and they need more support. But it's the current thinking of the board in addressing the um, this, this problem, that the, the, de the development of the community and the development team within the foundation specifically currently face and how to address that. Thank you. So this is a complicated question and it's something I'm particularly interested in because I come from a technical background and I've seen a lot of this in practice online. Um, I think um, over the last year, we've been understanding the foundation better, uh, looking at all the different parts of it, how it all interlinks. It's been improving a lot with the new leadership, Mariana joining, with Selena joining, leading a combined product and tech um, department. This is very much on the staff side of things, um, so from a board perspective, I'm, I'm seeking to understand it and see how it's going and see how, uh, as well through the CAC, there's been these open letters coming from the community, like the English Wikipedia new page we told saying we directly need technical support for our work, and also Commons has put in an open letter, and there's been general acceptedness within the Foundation to be engaging much more with that. I particularly enjoyed seeing how Selene has been making sure all different parts of the uh, technical infrastructure have a maintainer, um, which has led to things like the graphs extension um, was not being maintained, had issues, and it was being able to see the foundation take ownership of that and work on the issues. Has been really good from my perspective. I think there's a lot more to come in that area, and uh, I think it is very much a strategic area, um, and I think there's um, discussions going on which will hopefully help with that in the future. How do we engage? How do we get the foundation and the um, technical people and the online company just talking more about these issues and collaborating? Um, at the same time, I've seen things that have not been helping, and in particular antagonism from the community uh, coming towards the foundation. 
there is a lot of frustration there. The answer is not to always yell at people, it's to try to find ways of helping to come working together. And again, that's something that I'm hoping long term we can get much better at. That the foundation community can be engaged in civilly, find spaces where we can work together. And um, so I'm hoping that will be something we see more and more in the future. And I, I just want to say again, I really appreciate to see Ariana and Selena's work in this area, uh, which has really been helping a lot and moving the conversation forward in a way I've never seen from the foundation before. So it's really, really good. Questions? For all young people. So, can hear your question. Thank you, Rosie and Mike. Uh, actually, I agree totally with um, your suggestions on the skill sets needed for anyone that would want to be uh, involved. Uh, a, a, a trustee of the board. This is my question. How is the WMA board responding to the issues of knowledge equity, which has led to, the, to an imbalance in structural power and privileges and is impacting the representation of less privileged regions in the seats, like Africa? Um, no matter how skillful you are, no matter what you are actually uh, and be able to uh, amass as a Wikipedia. The structure on the ground is actually not so balanced for all regions. For Africa, it's likely to be to infinity for us to be a member of the board if the structures is not done in such a way that perhaps a seed should be created at least for some of these less privileged regions. That's my question. Thank you. So his question is about representation within the board. So he's asking on less less represented communities on the board whether they should be having some sort of regional distribution of seats. So what are your thoughts on having more underprivileged communities within the board? from uh, the United States state of California. And in California, in recent months, or maybe now it's been a year, uh, there has been a movement towards having a certain percentage of seats on every board be that for, be set aside for women. So if the question is, should we consider having a certain amount of seats on this board set aside for any kind of group, gender, uh, geography, uh, and any other way you might think, um, currently we have not considered doing something like that. Currently, the process is that we look for certain kinds of skills and attributes, um, experience, and we um, post that information so that candidates can consider whether or not they would be a good fit, and if they think they are, they then become a candidate the next election for 2024. So do you think, if you're asking Shona, should we say in our statement of what we're looking for, that we're looking for people from a certain geography? Currently, I have not, we're not saying that currently. Currently we're not saying that you must be from a certain geography or a certain gender or a certain something um, in order to be a candidate for the next election. Um, not to say that in the future we might not rethink how to do things, um, but I can just say that now in 2023, the conversations we're having regarding 2024, we have not included the word, let's define who should be a candidate by their geography. 
did that answer the question, or is there another nuance that I can maybe add to it? I can add a bit to that, but um, I would encourage you to stay for the next session. I listened to the movement, movement wide discussions about representation about how to organize the whole movement, because I think that's a big question of the foundation, the board of trustees. The board has financial responsibility for the foundation. It's uh, it also has the kind of overview of the community movement, but it's um, not probably not, possibly not the best place for all, specific geographic distribution, I would say, um, as opposed to looking at general skills and things like that. What I would encourage you to do is look at um, committees, and um, things have been changing there. There are the regional funding committees now, and look at getting engaged with those. Look at getting engaged with the other committees within the movement, which are the place where a lot of active, really interesting activity is taking place, and engage with them. Um, and look at um, building up, as I mentioned before, that uh, set of experiences across the whole movement, that um, CV for Wikimedia or career within Wikimedia that covers all the different aspects. Um, and, yeah, look at what overall people bring to the table and can share um, on some that board. Thank you. More questions? Thank you for answering uh, these questions. Um, actually, my question would be a bit different. Um, it's mostly related to research, research topic. So um, I know that conferences like Weekend Day in Lava are like the main idea or the main goal is actually to understand what are like the pain points, challenges that African countries are, are facing, how to help. But I think we need more than this on this topic. So if we really want to support like African countries and if you want really to like raise the bar, help them know what are their challenges, pain points, I think we need more of a research project for that. What I mean by that by this is I, I had a very interesting discussion with Seattle yesterday about a normal like topic which is like general assembly. So the definition of a general assembly or how we perceive it is really, really, really different from Morocco to Germany to, to, to Netherlands. And it was a bit surprising because you would assume that we deal with it the same way. General Assembly in Morocco would, 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 you know, would be organized the same way as, as in Germany, but like the differences is like very, very big. So I think if, if we really want to identify pain points, we need to conduct research to understand how each uh, community is organizing themselves. How do they organize themselves? How do they define these terms? What the General Assembly means to Morocco? What does it mean to Germany? And that's when we, I think we'll be able to understand the differences, the pain points, and maybe we can get some learning outcomes and see how we can adapt uh, successful models and adapt them to like, more of a local uh, version in, in Africa to, 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 to make these uh, organization work. So my question to you is, where is the reason, where is, how is research um, located in the strategy plan? Where is the situation? Is it like a priority now? How, how do you see a research uh, topics on, 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 on elements like this and other, including gender gap? Uh, how prioritized is this in the strategic plan? And how can we, um, uh, how can we show the, the, the importance of, of, of these research projects? So that's my, my, my question, because I personally think that it would unlock a lot of, a lot of uh, potential and it would also answer a lot of questions like why is everyone working here and not working there? What's the difference between this project here and there? What, what is the conception of a, of, of a user group to start with? How do these people collaborate with each other? So maybe I think if we start, it would be a big project, I can tell you, because there are a lot of differences, a lot of things to, to, to recover, but if we manage to identify the, the highlights or the big differences, then maybe we can know how to help. Then, then maybe we can identify the real pain points and, and how to you know move forward and, and reduce the, the, the gap in the knowledge within the community. So yeah, that's my question. Thank you. Thanks very much. I'll, uh, again, I think 
this is probably um, not a first instance question for the board, so let me try to answer the uh, a few parts of your question, and then show up maybe just to offer a reflection on your question as well, if that's okay. Um, well, there's quite a lot of research that happens, as you know, across the movement, and quite a lot of support for research projects, both by the research teams of the foundation, as well as grants that are given to individuals who have good ideas. So I think at a minimum, you should pursue that if that's something that's personally interesting to you. I think if the research question is, how do different countries understand the concept of a general assembly, I would definitely engage with the Movement Charter Drafting Committee if that's sort of what the, the question is. I think what you can see in the annual plan of the foundation is that many areas have been identified as priorities. Gender is one, knowledge equity is a guiding principle, and what does that mean for support at a regional level for each of the regions, depending on what's needed. And so those of you who have been here for the past few days have heard work that has been done that is particularly focused on building on the needs in the, in the African context. And so certainly at a sort of narrow level, if that's a question you're interested in, I'm sure somebody in this room, if it's not me, I can help find somebody, can guide you on what the, those processes are, because I think we have to be evidence-based in all of the things that we do. And we have to be clear what is the, you know, what is the rationale for making changes. And research has always been a big part of the work um, that happens in the, in the Wikimedia movement. So I don't, I'm gonna, is that helpful? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. My term um, as a member of this board ends um, next year, so I'm not uh, engaged in really the conversation at the board regarding exactly what the board is going to be looking for in its statement. So uh, this is a clarification. Um, Shola, when I spoke to you and uh, tried to answer your question, that I only answered a very high level, but not maybe some decisions that are currently being made because I will be, I could potentially be a candidate for the next election. I just want to briefly say that research is very important. I'm a researcher myself. Um, and getting that input is always very useful in terms of planning, in terms of understanding the issues. Um, I don't have a specific comment on this case, but I just want to emphasize that it's important and it's one of many things that the board has to consider trying to understand the dialogue. Thank you. Any additional questions, thoughts? Before we end the session, we'll jump to the next one. Okay, thank you so much, Rosie. Thanks, Mike. Just to say, we are around the rest of the day, so if you have any questions you have, uh, wanted to ask, good luck, everyone. Do catch us outside. And that is to say, thank you so much. If you have questions beyond today, and you think of them later, you can ask in our mailbox, askcac at wikimedia.org, that's A-S-K-C-A-C -C at wikimedia.org. Thank you. Thank you all, and online audience and those in the, um, in the room, thank you so much for your participation and your questions. Thank you. Thank you.